Welcome to Lab 1 of Physics 2212 Charged Tapes. In this experiment, two pieces of charged tape are prepared and their interactions with each other and other objects are analyzed. From these observations, we can determine the total charge on the tape and model the point charges on the python. A summary of the findings is shown at the bottom of the slide where we see that the charge on the tape is positive. The first two key concepts are Newton's second law and the gravitational force near Earth's surface. Newton's second law states that the net force on an object is equal to the change in momentum of the object over time, and this law can be described by the velocity update formula shown. The gravitational force near Earth's surface, or the weight force, is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the gravitational constant, shown below the gravitational force equation. The gravitational force is pointing in the negative y direction. The electric force is also an important concept. This non-contact force states that the force that a charged object exerts, exerts on another charged object is equal to the product between the Coulomb constant and the quotient between the two charges and the square of the distance between the charges, pointing in the direction of r hat. The magnitude of the electric force does not consider r hat or the signs of the charges. There are some key assumptions for this lab. First, the tape acts as a point charge that is located at the center of the tape. Second, air resistance is ignored. Finally, we assume that both tapes have the same amount of charge. Here is the procedure of the lab, which outlines how the charged U tapes were created, what tests were done to determine the charge of the U tape, and how one U tape was suspended by the other U tape for the floating U tape section of the lab. Here are the main observations from the U-tape interactions. Importantly, the charge of the U-tape was determined to be positive because it was attracted to a negatively charged plastic object. The separation distance between the held U-tape and the suspended U-tape was also determined to be 2.5 centimeters. Here's a free body diagram of the interaction between the held U-tape and the suspended U-tape in which both tapes are repelling each other. For the suspended tape to float, it must be in equilibrium. This means that the net force of the tape is zero. The system is the suspended U-tape, and the surroundings include the held U-tape and the earth, which exert forces on the system. Here are the experimental data and subsequent calculations from the experiment with the charged tapes. Importantly, the number of atoms in the tape is calculated, as well as the tape weight. The charge of the U-tape is shown here, with the relevant equations and calculation steps shown. Note that the magnitude of the electric force is equal to the magnitude of the gravitational force. We know that the charge is positive, so there is a deficit of electrons on the tape's surface. The deficit in electrons and the deficient electron-to-atom ratio are shown. The computational model was done in vPython. Here is the code for the constants and for the forces with the equations for the relevant forces shown below the forces section of the code on the right side of the slide. Note that UFPES in the code is the Coulomb constant. This slide shows the calculations section of the code and the visualization section of the code. This includes the calculation for charges, deficient electrons, number of atoms, and the deficient electron to atom ratio, with the relevant equations converted to code on the right side. Here are the results of the code. As stated, there is an electron deficiency on the surface of the tape, which is indicated by the positive charge. Furthermore, the net force is zero for the suspended U-tape to float. Because the net force is zero on the floating U-tape, the magnitude of the electric force equals the magnitude of the gravitational force on the tape. Possible sources of error include inaccurate measurements of the tape length, tape width, and separation distance, the held U-tape not being parallel to the suspended U-tape, and a rounding in the calculations. If the charges were swapped between electrons and protons, the electric fields of electrons and protons would change, as the electric field for a positive charge is outwards from the source, and the electric field of a negative charge is towards the source. However, the, op the observations would not change, because like charges would continue to repel and opposite charges would continue to attract. Swapping the charges does not change the interactions between the charged objects. Touching the charged tapes with a hand would lead to a transfer of electrons, 
which leads to a transfer of charge. Specifically, the transfer of electrons from the surface of the hand to the positively charged tape would decrease the positive charge on the tape, leading to weaker interactions.